All right, we are back. So, who remembers what happened last week? Demons and shit at the bottom of the sea. We Sanity breaks. Bleach bombs, flamers, plague spewers. Friends. 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 And Sutton crapped himself. And yeah, Sutton. Sutton, Sutton got dunked after he was gonna like, I'll kill you for this. And then uh, Hellsife was like, oh, word? It was a very like, he does tend to channel, uh, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. <laughs> and you guys do tend to channel fuck around and find out. <laughs> That's true. That is very much our fucking brand. All right. So it's been a few weeks since you've last uh, had a mission. You've been on downtime R&R, &R, mostly recovering from... Did we go fishing? I suppose you could have. He... Do we send okay. uh, in the fishing rod? If you would uh, like to go fishing uh, in between, you definitely can. You hook Henry. <laughs> Henry went You're going to need to roll a real good strength check for this one. But it's, it's, been, a, it's been a few weeks. Uh, you've had some downtime to recover. Um, and you find yourself on a small uh, transport ship heading to... Uh, so you're on a... Uh, basically, it's a Valkyrie. Uh, traveling through space. Uh, and Selena is there giving you the briefing for your next mission. Ah, good. Okay. All right, everyone. So, you uh, were able to successfully arrest uh, Gerwin Ravenweld of the Ebony Syndicate a few months back. Uh, he's been undergoing interrogation. Well, actually, he told us literally everything that we wanted to hear after I told him what the nine steps of inquisitorial interrogation would entail. And around step seven or eight is when he uh, just spilled the beans. I bet that happens a lot. Oh, yeah, no, defi definitely. I mean, I still did uh, number nine. Well, yeah. At yeah. which point he lasted for about an hour or two before he... Uh, number nine's my favorite. Broke down completely and died. But he did tell us now, what we've been able to find out is that the Ebony Syndicate uses cutouts and do their best to make various cells so no cell can compromise another one. We've already known that. But he had enough information we were able to find out that the Ebony Syndicate is currently suffering from a, well, money shortage. The Inquisition and Arbites have been cutting into their operation far too much. They are a bit desperate and have been arranging an auction to try and sell a artifact they've discovered. So, she hands you all a picture. It is a red pearl. This is the Crimson Pearl. It's a lost heretical artifact from around the time of the Horus Heresy. It's... What does it do? We're not sure. Uh, rumors of it have been abound it's across the entire span of the imperium and back and it's been gone for the last few centuries no word of it it appears that it's wound up in the hands of the ebony syndicate and they've been reluctant to sell it until matters have forced them to so they have arranged a emergency auction that is being hosted on the ship we are approaching and if you look out the window, she points to a, uh, it's a heavy Imperial transport. Over there is the Betrayer's Woe. That is a ship that will be transporting passengers, and they are using it as cover to have the auction go about. You'll be going undercover on board, getting into the auction, and you have three goals. I want you to... Identify, capture, or kill the Ebony Syndicate member running the auction. I want you to identify anybody attending the auction, and I want you to recover the pearl. Sure. All right. This is going to be tough to support remotely, so uh, we're on I our own. Now, Why don't we just seize the entire vessel? Uh, 
we are concerned about the pearl disappearing. Uh, it's not exactly big. It's about yay big, and it is entirely possible it could just get dropped off somewhere, and these ships are big. Uh, you're going to be seeing probably about 40,000 people packed into this ship. In the grim darkness of. Um, and from what we've been able to tell, the ship itself has some semi-abandoned sections where the crew doesn't go anymore because it's too dangerous. Mm. Uh, Space Hulk in the making. Ground sector. <clears throat> yeah, it's... We don't want to... The other thing is we just don't want to scare anybody away. If any of the auction people, uh, any of the people attending the auction leave or find out that the Inquisition's interested, they'll go to ground and we won't be able to identify them. So just go in, find out who's who, and we'll take care of the rest once the uh, once that is done. What shall be our identities and credentials? Well, question? we have a few options. Um, we still have your identities as members of House Adela. Oh. Uh, we've also been able to secure your identities as members, basically representing rogue traders or other various noble houses. Uh, House Vixus has found itself in a little bit of trouble, and you can definitely use some identification from them. Whatever you prefer, it's up to you. You're more familiar with your cover identities. I would say either House Vixus or yep. we act as rogue traders, um, Cat's Paws. That's definitely a possibility. Uh, I would give you a bit of leeway, not as much as being members of the Inquisition, but really just don't cause anybody to go to ground if possible. That being said, the ship itself is... Well, it's uh, pretty self-contained. Mm. So, the problem is we're not strictly that interested in just blowing it up. We're trying to be a little nicer in this case. Although, I'll be, that be said, uh, Hassar has been more interested in just having us open fire on the ship. Hellsythe mm. has been less interested in that. So we're going to attempt his method first before we go do something stupid and illogical. Speaking of something stupid and illogical, um, let's get a plan in place in case Sutton and his cronies actually open fire on the ship while we're aboard on this mission if they want to get rid of us and hide their tracks in one swoop. That's always a possibility, yes. We have been tracking Sutton. He is at least three weeks by warp travel away from here. Um, we've been able to manipulate things that would have him have to, uh, take care of some other business ahead of time. So we're not expecting him. That being said, warp travel is incredibly, well, let's just say three weeks by warp travel isn't necessarily going to take three weeks. Uh, you should be aware of him having any other people on board, but the fact is Helpsythe has been doing his best to keep this mission close to his chest. The Hussar's aware of it, but he doesn't know the full details. Also, I mean, what, what kind of plan could we have if somebody shows up and opens fire on the ship, other than try to get the hell off the ship? You could pray to the God Emperor. That's always my plan. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't need to be said. We won't be in the area, but the fact is nobody else should be in the area either. It's simply a passenger transport vessel that are taking pilgrims from point A to point B, at least on the surface. It's really meant for escorting a large number of people from various locations around to other holy sites or pilgrimage locations. So if we go the trader route, are we going to need to have goods available to trade? <laughs> you will have 
an inquisitorial uh, pocketbook from which you can draw on that uses undisclosed funds. Yeah, if we're if we're rogue trader affiliated, we're basically here to participate in auction and buy things. Okay. I would assume. Yep. For your purposes, just assume you have unlimited amount of thrones that you can use. Um, well, if we can be unrecognized, I feel like being um, just agents of, of traders is like the lowest key thing we can be. Yeah. If we're going with the Vixis or Adela identities, Adela's probably people might know well. those names, they might recognize us. It would connect a useful cover identity to another operation, so it would kind of risk burning the whole thing. Yeah. What about that Dula school? Oh, yeah. don't well, worry I'm about gonna... House Adela being identified. As far as anybody is concerned, I had you all arrested and tortured. That's fair. Oh, uh, Ian, question. Yes. Um, in the downtime, have I recovered from that psychotic break? Yeah. The... Okay. Yeah, that was, like, only for a week, and this has been, like, three or four weeks later. Okay, that makes me feel better. So, yeah, he didn't eat for a week. He's still probably a little thinner than he was. Boy, that sounds fucking nice. <laughs> they probably would have had to give you, like, um, an IV. Yeah. So, yeah. Just so you wouldn't, like, dehydrate to death. He did his best to eat, but uh, he was having a, a bad time with it. Nurgle just is funny that way. You, you, after you meet, like, a Nurgle dude, you just don't want to eat. Ever again. <laughs> Ever again. Well, for right now, we'll, we are approximately 45 minutes out from docking with the Betrayer's Woe, so you have time to plan. I... So, uh, but you guys be traders. So this, so you said this is a uh, primarily a shuttling pilgrims between uh, holy sites and such. Majority population are pilgrims going to different holy sites. I um, can slide right into that. Uh, oh situation. yeah. Uh yeah. Well, we have some burner identities for various holy men from different locations that you could utilize. Yeah, give me like three of those. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, give him three of them. <laughs> All right. We have two available currently. Sensels. I shall start as Hubert, and uh, if things go badly for Hubert, I will uh, change hats and become Harold. All right. So, looking at the cover identity she transmits to your data slate. Hubert is a holy man from a garden world. Basically, he's just some trust fund kid who is uh, went to join, like, took the vows and uses his parents' money to go around to, like, various holy sites on pilgrimage. He's not had a tough life at all. So this is... Trustafarian, check. You are about to be the Far Cry 3 protagonist. Yep. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I play Far Cry 3, but I think I can work with it. Uh, Harold uh. is a preacher who the um, Imperial cult, the uh, Ecclesiarchy, has sent to various worlds to preach uh, to natives. So he is a, um, he's a missionary. Um and has traveled across a couple of, like, different frontier and death worlds or gone to discovered planets that um, have been broken off from the Imperium for centuries to a few thousand years. So that's we'll, his we'll covering. Discover right entities, and we'll definitely use them. Okay. As for, if you're going undercover as rogue traders, we have a special rogue trader we use who is an ally of the Inquisition and just carries out certain work that we need to be done on his behalf. Or, well, I guess more accurately, he does work on our behalf. It's more of a you scratch my back, I'll scratch your kind of situation. So if you do take this cover identity, just be aware he there is some strings attached. Just... Health site doesn't like ordering people around if he could get them on his side. Good to know. 
All right. Shall I give you any other cover identities? Um, I'll take a rogue trader's buyer, and uh, obviously somebody who's uh, got reason to be as armed as they let us. I can't imagine they'll want to disarm us fully. She transmits the identity of Wanderil Halkett to you. All right. Wanderil I'll take is... one as well um, when you have a second. Yes. Bodyguard, I guess. Is that a thing for rogue traders? Yeah, rogue, rogue traders would have all sorts of people. Uh, transmits to Evord, Adelise de la Porte. Ooh. Fancy. You fancy, huh? And transmits to Tigo, Arthur Panic. All of you are going to be undercover for our rogue trader ally, Zephyr Donaston. Ah, I think we've met him, haven't we? No, I don't think so. You've there's been a rogue trader you've met, but I think he doesn't. It's not that dude. You gotcha. met him a couple of times, but you've never met we're, this guy. Were you thinking the guy trying to swindle money? Well, he wasn't technically trying to swindle money. He was more just trying to like con somebody. I think he was, basically he was just trying to sell some like merchandise he had come up upon and just wasn't doing a really great job. <laughs> Cypher here is an older friend of Hellsythe, who they, they've been through the thick of it. They've known each other longer than I've known Hellsythe, which is pretty impressive, all things considered. Mm. From my understanding, they've met one another when Hellsythe was pre-Inquisitor, when he was still an interrogator, working for Inquisitor Knight. But any more information about that, you'd have to ask him. Either way, Zypher is perfectly fine with us operating as undercover as members of his uh, rogue trader uh, fleet. As for right now, he is actually in an entirely different sector, but has agents throughout the uh, various sectors of the Imperium operating on his behalf. All right, then. Anything else before we dock, or mm. shall I just shut up and let you get down to business? Uh, let's see. I think we're fairly well ready. Do we know what kind of um, protocols they're going to be enacting about security? Like, will they allow us to walk around armed? Uh, my understanding is no. If I had take a guess at this auction, you will probably have to surrender your weapons. Mm. What are the odds of us getting them back? I mean, this is a lot of thrones getting passed around. Think of it sort of like giving up your weapons at the uh, Noble Retreat with House Vixus. Yeah, but... Well, the, hopefully with less Dark right Eldar. Down. Yes, Gar? We'll be able to walk around the ship with our weapons and just not the auction, or...? Most likely. Okay, that's all right. All right. Uh, is everything going to be okay with me wearing Arbides armor? Uh, you are not technically Arbides. I mean, I would just... It's just something I traded for. Okay, got it. Well, I would just cover up your Arbides icon. A person... An Arbides person, like... If you cover up your badge of office while wearing Arbides armor, people will understand that you are no longer Arbides. Got it. Gar would like to um, take the heavy flamer and such things and, like, his uh, chain axe. Basically, yeah, I mean, I'm assuming all my other weapons I've collected, I'm storing. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I have enough of an armory. Ever. But right. um, my heavy flamer and chain axe, I would like to... Um, get essentially a uh, little red wagon and uh, <laughs> place them artfully in it and construct sort of a holy diorama over the top of them. Nice. Which I will then cart around and use in my preaching. I... Unless I need to burn someone alive, at which time I will remove the diorama covering <laughs> and, and, commence, and, and commence burning. <laughs> yeah, sure. We'll get you a little red wagon for that. She yeah, make it. Uh, he won't, he leans over and whispers to uh, Selena, 
make it a gondola? <laughs> I'll be but right back. Right. Rolls and carries my shield. Whatever it looks like. Selena like flicks you hard in the forehead. Worth. Thwack. <laughs> right. Ah. She just sends one of her like. Uh, she sends one of her attendants back, and he like comes back with a. Uh, it's like a little wheeled. Um, yeah, it's like basically a. Oh, that's it. That's it. It's a wagon. It's like a little, little wheeled wagon, like a little cart with a handle, and she's like. It's meant for transporting cargo, so any diorama or that's holy is up to you. Yeah, I'm gonna put my put my weapons on it, and I'm gonna get some cardboard, some paper mache, from the, you know storage room. <laughs> Just doing an arts and crafts project like a kid. Yeah, I'm gonna do a little arts and crafts project. I, I, I kind of love this. I personally don't know the iconography well enough to really tell you what it is, but. Um... It, prob Garwood. it probably would be yeah, Garwood though. It'd just be like the uh, the double headed Aquila, um, and probably like a bunch of skulls. Yeah, and it just fits right over the top of the uh, weapons and stuff. Here's what I as we earlier. go through, you know, as we go through the the port, I'll just bribe a guy about it, and I think it'll be good. All right then. Well. You'll be uh, docking in the next few minutes. As for me, I have other business to attend to, so I will not be joining you. Also, uh, you wouldn't believe it, but people tend to know I'm with the Inquisition. Mm. Really? It's just it, completely out of the blue, right? Yeah. Well, good luck, and she gives you a hard slap on the back. <laughs> like, they kind of put you off balance for a bit. She, like... I don't know how they know she, like, puts on her The Inquisition Rules number one t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell keyed my fucking cruiser? The back of the shirt is there something wrong with Sutton. At this point, the, uh, the Valkyrie you're on docks with the heavy transport, the Betrayer's Woe, well, lands in the cargo bay. Uh, you see some... Uh, you see some people who are, like, waving down the ship using, like, the lights. Um, other ships are also landing in the docking bay. And Selena goes into the cabin just to make sure people aren't able to see her as the uh, back of the Valkyrie opens up and you are being led out. Uh, more people are milling around in this cargo bay. Uh, people in kind of rough spun tunics, uh, holy garb. Uh, as well as there are various other, like, people in, like, different... They're wearing just, like, standard clothing or some armor and weapons uh, to protect themselves or are various, very obviously, bodyguards for uh, people around here. Uh, and you have a number of the crew who are just kind of, like, guiding people through. Um, and you just see one guy who just yells out, is like, all right, everyone, filter through. Uh, find a spot to bunk. We uh, don't have any dedicated cabins, so you're going to be basically in halls or any other compartments you can find unless you've already secured some. Well, let's go before they force us to split up. All right. Through here, through here. Start, and start throwing elbows. All the people are being just milled through the, uh, just being milled through. Actually, go ahead and make an awareness roll. I will make an awareness roll. I will fail an awareness roll. Fail that shit so hard. All right. Where's my awareness? My elf eyes are working. Oh, shit. All right. Watchmaker Eve and Tigo. Well, Gar's distracted with, like, a uh, preacher giving a procession. Uh, just, like, preaching out uh, the, the, the word of the God Emperor. Uh, and actually... Does Gar find his preaching to be good or not good? It's kind of a standard sermon. Nothing, you know, special. Gar likes but... it. Gar likes it. All right. Uh, as for uh, Watchmaker Eve and Tico, they actually spot uh, some armor that they recognize. The Iron Wolves. Ah. The uh, kind of black armor you see the icon... Uh, you see a number of them kind of, like, watching the uh, people coming out. 
um, just doing a quick scan throughout the procession. There is just hundreds of people here, though, so it's very difficult for them to actually, like, pick out anybody specific, uh, specifically. But they are here. Because, I mean, I rolled super good, so I'm just wondering if any of them look familiar from our past. Mm, you don't recognize any of them. You're pretty sure you've never seen them before. But they do eventually, after scanning through the crowd here, uh, go back down through the hallways of this uh, transport. Okay. Uh, the rest of everyone else is just kind of like being shown like through the different halls of the transport, uh, entering into like actually large open areas where it's basically a large cargo hold that has been turned into kind of a tent city where people are setting up their tents, um, like their gear. Uh, people have actually started fires in the ship, um, like little um, portable um, like fire pits and are cooking food over it. Uh, various preachers are giving sermons. Um, the crew is attempting to keep people uh, in line. Uh, you do see various members of the crew who are armed. They look to be the, uh, the Navy Guard. And they are all armed with LAS pistols, LAS rifles. Okay, so they're a little step up from our heavy stubber thugs. A lethal. A lethal. And you are just shoved into this big group of people. Um, the cargo bay you're in is massive. It's meant for just transporting vast quantities of any material, really, you could think of. And so you're probably looking at about a thousand people or so in here, to your best estimate. Hmm. Well, let's get cozy. Uh, grab some quarters, throw some elbows, and uh, looking for bowls. I'll, uh, I'll affect a look of, not disgust, but, like, I asked for the window suite. I work for a rogue trader. I don't need this in my life. Et cetera, et cetera. Gar, Gar moves off to, a, to an empty corner and sets up shop. All right. Gar's... Notebox. Positions his diorama just so. Just to see something. Uh, yeah, that's probably good enough. All right. Uh, do your diorama and your little soapbox. And are you do preaching right now? or? Um, I'm preparing to preach. A few people, like, see this. It's a little more interesting than what the other preachers have. Um, they don't have a weapon diorama. <laughs> uh, so they're just kind of stopping and looking. I don't have a diorama. This is bullshit. They're like trying to figure uh, out if this, if these are like holy relics. So as, cool as people as people start to check it out, Gar will Gar will give a brief uh, sermon, and he will tell the parable of uh, of the loaves and the fishes. Except it goes it goes a little bit differently in 40k. It's like, yay, you know, the god emperor when he walked among men was. Uh, preaching the good word to a vast crowd and the people were hungry and uh, these guys showed up with a basket full of bread and uh, a basket full of fish and the god emperor looked upon the fish and he saw that they had two heads <laughs> and he said yay these fish have been touched by chaos and he shot that guy right in the face <laughs> <laughs> amen uh, go ahead and make a, a command roll at well, let's say like a plus 20 these people are pretty receptive Yep. All right. Jeremy, having you in this game is a fucking treasure. <laughs> it, it is, it is. <laughs> I always get a kick out of Gar. I mean, I get a kick out of all your characters in their own bizarre little ways, but the, the people are, like, hearing this sermon, and they're, like, falling to their knees and weeping with joy. <laughs> feel the holiness. They could just, like, feel the God Emperor coursing through them as... He explained, you explained just how the God Emperor just killed a dude with two-headed fish. <laughs> what if I start feel, speaking in tongues? <laughs> I feel God chaos. in this chilies. This, God, this fish is chaos. 
the Deeper saw that shit was whack and he indeed Gar is actually collecting a couple dozen people who are like just really like into his sermon that the rest of you are I'm assuming you're all standing aback from Gar at this point you're like we're not. all just kind of watching the magic unfold well now there's a distraction so you can do your thing in uh, obscurity this is true Right, so we're finding a place to bunk? Or have we already found a place? Uh, well, I mean, this, there's a few open spots of this, like, kind of tent city that people have set up. Uh, but if you wanted to spy, you'd have to go and, like, try and find one. Um, yeah, I'm gonna see if, uh, while people are distracted with the sermon, I'm gonna see if I can get some quarters where we're all bunched up together. Okay, uh, go ahead and make an inquiry roll to, um, uh, yeah, inquiry roll to see if you can, like, kind of go throughout the crowd and, like, get some information about that. Ah, uh, I mean, I can also do an inquiry roll. Yeah, okay. if you would. I think I'm kind of inquiry-ish. <laughs> the notorious INQ. Uh, where is Inquiry? Where are you? There you be. Ooh. Are you serious? You know, I'll take that. <laughs> okay. We're getting bullied. All right. There we go. Uh, well, Watchmaker and Eve were attempting to talk to various members of the crew uh, about quarters they could acquire. Uh, and the crew, well, for Watchmaker, they just kind of politely tell you, sorry, we don't have anything available. Um, with Eve, she picked one guy who probably is having a pretty bad day because he's like, back off. We don't got no quarters. If you had a quarter already, you would have you would already been there. And he kind of like rather somewhat threateningly gestures with his like las gun. I whisper under my breath, this bitch. <laughs> Harry Potter and the audacity of this bitch. <laughs> As for Tigo, he has a little trouble at first, but he does eventually find a member of the crew. He's like, I'm Sorry, sir. All the private quarters have already been claimed. Um, so unless you've already reserved ahead of time, we just don't have anything available. Can I bribe him? Should we check to see if there's a reservation under our guy's name? Uh, well, let's. You could start. Zephyr. Yeah. So let's start with yeah, we'll, we'll Tigo's start bribe. With so Tigo, go ahead and make an influence roll. I can explain. Here's gold. As for Eve, if you would like to, you can actually go ahead. Oh, actually, this would be another inquiry roll. Nice. Oh. Gar's just like, oh, uh, but we do have reservations. Um, as you, if you check the list here, and he just hands him like a bag of thrones. And the guy just looks down and is like, I can see you do. Yes. That looks like us right there. Uh, he's like, let me just check the list real quick. And goes down through the list. He's like, all right, you three, uh, come with me real quick. Uh, obviously some sort of, uh, miscommunication in terms of reserving rooms. Oh, these things happen. It's and you just follow him through the hallways as he takes you to a room. And he's like, do, do, do. yeah, here we are. Opens up the door and there's like a, uh, preacher inside who, older guy who, like, has his, like, family and his flock. And they've kind of, like, bunched in. So it's it's a lot more people in the room than really they should have fit in there. Uh, it's like a room, rules. It's like a room for, like, eight people, and there's, like, 20 of them. Ah, Otakon rules. And he's just like, hey, it's a mistake. Get out. <laughs> and like, but we all paid. We, we pooled our money, and we paid it up. Oh, there was a mistake. Get out. Oh, geez. And he's like, kind of, he just like points the gun at them and kicks them out. And they all just kind of like, there's room in the cargo hold, but we don't have any, like, I don't care. Damn. Like, all right, all yours. Thank you. Power of bribes. And he Are just, we the baddies? Just makes it quick. <laughs> no. At your life. Oh, so that's going to come up again, isn't it? 20 people in an eight-person room. That it was almost shoulder to shoulder. I mean, there were, like, people who were, like, taking turns laying down. <laughs> but for three people, this room is actually quite nice. 
Three people and a cyber mastiff. And a cyber mastiff. Yep. Bork, 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 bork. Bark, yeah. bark. Gets his own bed. Yeah, he hops up to the bed first. <laughs> <laughs> I have claimed this one as mine. Chewie just looks at you all. Friends. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> <laughs> I walk right out of the room. <laughs> nope. Flamer. Unsubscribe. On second thought, you guys can stay in the room. Yeah, keep it up, the guy. You got him on the ropes. And Chewie just does like three turns, lays down, and tucks his like cyber nose into his cyber tail Aww. to keep it cyber warm. <laughs> Sex robot. Sex I mean, robot. I mean, all he had to do was turn on the heat. No, it's pretty cold in like the cargo bay, but here it's actually you know pleasant-ish. Take it. This isn't like a fancy rogue trader ship or anything. This is. It's not as bad as like an Imperial Navy vessel, which would basically you'd have hammocks. There's actually like beds, but yeah. Should we scope out the room at all? Like I know they 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 probably don't have the ability to spy on every passenger here, but you know. Bust out the scanner. All right. Uh, if you would yeah, like, we'll do, we'll do a uh, we'll do a toss. Go ahead and make awareness rolls to just kind of like investigate the room. Nice. Okay. Uh, you look around. It definitely is. They've, like, the previous occupants tracked some dirt and the like into it. And they've actually left a few of their, like, things. <laughs> uh, holy, like, symbols. Um, like, the uh, various, like, religious books. But from what you can find, nothing out of the ordinary or no bugs or observation devices, so you're pretty sure this room is clean. I assume these are God Emperor worshippers. Yeah, it's all just, like, Imperial Aquilas, um, and things that are, like, the, uh, finger bone of a saint, which just looks like a normal finger bone. Various <laughs> other religious iconography, um, books that explain, like, the God Emperor, um, you know, religious texts that have... If you were to peruse through them, they look to be um, older like religions. Books? Yeah, like picture books or like books that were related to older religions that have been edited to insert the God Emperor as like the head deity. Where's the thing where he killed the guy that was selling the two-headed fish? Uh, you know, it's funny. You can't actually find what, like a... Uh... <laughs> you find something similar... Of the God Emperor striking down like people who worshipped a uh, a golden pig, but nothing about a two headed fish. I just like we just like set up like a little corner is like for a guard is like they don't have the two headed fish story. What's wrong with these people? <laughs> I mean, there's really a bunch dwelling of... in terror without the light of the God Emperor. There are probably. As many tales of the God Emperor as there are, like, people in the Imperium. Isn't that lovely? Faith is a beautiful thing. Yeah. Well, so let's we, kill some people. Are we able to microbead, like, um, to Gar? Or just let uh, know our situation? Yeah, you'd probably be within a kilometer. Uh, uh, there's a lot of interference, um... Uh, but Gar is able if you were to micro to and from you would be able to get the gist of it after a little bit of like finagling we do want to be careful about comm leeches and speaking yep. of I do have a comm leech yep. Let's see if we, can... we can, can uh see if we can set it up yeah do you have to physically mount the comm leech to something like is there like a local transponder everything is getting routed through um uh, let me check the comm leech thing itself just so I can determine uh, are you going to use a tech use rule? I assume that Com Leech, especially because it's only a single uh, kilogram, so it's only a few pounds, is, um, um, it is probably handheld, um, and you would just need to, like, use a tech use rule to, like, tune it, to, like, okay. pick up various transmissions. I will start doing that. Okay. Go ahead make and a make a tech use. Eh. Eh, eh. It manual? picks up a lot of comm data, but yeah, it all... Just lots and lots of chatter. Yeah, just tons. It's like people are microbeating to one another. Um, you're picking up a little bit of the ship communications, but it's all in some sort of naval jargon you're not able to identify. Is that a... Can you try again later? Or is... Did you use your bonus on that, too? Um, um, 
He could. Yeah, I did. With the comp tool, copy tool. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I still uh, only have base training. Yeah. Right now, basically, the com leeches um, act for about as long as a battery does, and it drains and starts to do the automatic recharge process. From your, in, from what you can gather about this device, it uses something similar to a power pack of a las gun. Not okay. exact, so you can't like just swap out a power pack into it. <laughs> We're not, we're not going to be able to flex vault this one. It just <laughs> recharges automatically. Although if you wanted to, you could chuck it into a fire to charge it like real quick. Eh, I think we'll pass, but I'll, um, we'll try again. I'll, I'll keep trying throughout the mission to see if I can pick up anything of worth. You figure it's going to take you a few hours, maybe like, probably about like eight hours to recharge. So what you're saying, once Gar's done uh, preaching. <laughs> well, yeah, right now Gar's still in the cargo bay with his like. He's just his... going at it. I mean, by this point, he's probably got, like, about 50 or 60 people listening to the parable of the two-headed fish. <laughs> wonder if he's won the Iron Wolves over yet. He doesn't see any more Iron Wolves. When did we meet the Iron Wolves? Uh, oh, yeah, so Eve would be aware of the Iron Wolves, but the Iron Wolves are a mercenary group that have been hired by the Ebony Syndicate for various other missions. Um, and the, the the Acolytes have tangled with them. Um, we throughout used their going. identities. We fought and killed them a couple of times. I killed one of their guards in an alleyway after you finished with a hooker. Yep, that's true. That was like the oh, very yeah, first one. You just one. straight up fucking serial killered him for no reason other than you were salty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think you were salty. I think you were just like, I want to go out and kill a dude. Oh, yeah, you were inspired by Gar's fucking yes. sermons. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, oh, you we just fun. rolled with that. Yeah, and then uh, that was like one of the openings in the uh, for their guard thing for that, that deal that went wrong. Yep, that's true, yeah. That was like your very first mission. You killed a guard, and they needed to like get some replacements in. Uh, Eve Ward herself would have had dealings with the Iron Wolves in her investigations of the Ebony Syndicate. Uh, so you would have seen their armor and the um, their symbol around. Uh, you would know that they would have had some measure of training, probably ex-Imperial Guard or maybe just even on-the-job training for various people. So the assumption here is that they're probably, like, the group um, protecting the Red Pearl right now? You're not sure. You okay. do know that this is that's an a, Ebony Syndicate. That's good, uh, yeah, that's a good assumption, though. Yeah. Okay. You just know that they are hired by the Ebony Syndicate, and primarily you've only dealt with them having been hired by them. But, so, it's been, I would say it's been about an hour since you've um, boarded the ship, got your it's been, order. it's been an interesting hour for everyone, indeed. I see that uh, religious group. Yeah, Gar actually does see, like, these, uh, a group of about 20 people enter into the cargo bay. Kind of grumbling a bit. Yeah. Gar, um, Gar changes the topic of his preaching to uh, um, the uh, um, virtues of uh, poverty. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Go ahead. How it's important to like accept, you know, your lot in life. <laughs> Go ahead and make a command roll. Uh, just a flat command. They're a little upset. Like, they hear the sermon, and they're a smidge upset, but they do eventually, like, all right, maybe this is a test from the God Emperor, and they just find a spot. Like, they just go and, like, integrate with another group and start trying to borrow their tents. You know, charity or whatever. Charity or whatever. The Warhammer 40K story. <laughs> I mean, not you Games give. Workshop. They do not believe in charity, but still. You give, you give to the God Emperor's Inquisition. With that being said, I want to go to that games workshop in West Hartford. Is it back uh, open again, or is it a new one? I thought no. you took a picture of the, uh, the Space Marine there. I did not take a picture, but you can find it online. It's pretty cool. And as far as I'm aware, it's open. I mean, they had, the Space Marine dude's still there. If they close, maybe you could buy the Space Marine. I Don't Why? tempt me. You know what's gonna happen? He's gonna he's gonna recruit us to steal the Space Marine. Yeah, we're gonna start making influence rolls with crowbars. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we're LARPing. All right. Selena has <laughs> sent you to go, moves. like, recover Space Marine armor. Space uh, Marine totally and do. West Hartford uh, Plaza missing. All right. I'm known assailant. 
So let's see here. All right. So yeah, Gar does his. Shows up next to Sharkford. <laughs> No, so are short? we able to get like an itinerary on like when this auction is going to be? Uh, well, you haven't found, you don't, it, it wouldn't be public information. You would know gotcha. that much. Um, um, should we just see where the, I forgot, the, uh, black, the Iron Wolves are like hanging out? Yeah. Kinda, like, if you, the, you know, kind of mingle, see where they are. Yeah, if you wanted to, you could do inquiry rolls to try and find them, or the ship itself is approximately, f I would say it's like four kilometers long yeah. um, from like end to end, and then it's also wide and deep in terms of like the massive cargo bays it has. Yeah, I'm just wondering like if we could find out where they're like doing shift changes or where they're going for their breaks or whatever the heck they um, you could do, like, inquiry rolls to try and find that, or you could do hard awareness rolls to see if you can, like, walk the halls and find them. Try that. Can I try a combination? Kind of just walk, see if I see them? Yeah, go ahead, them. make an awareness roll, like, a negative 20, uh, as this ship is relatively packed and is a little difficult to navigate through. And also, you're basically just traveling through a micro city to try and find some guys. No, unfortunately, you're just not able to pick up. Yeah, go ahead. Negative twenty. Yay! I'm spotty today. So, Watchmaker is kind of walking the halls, and he actually does manage to see a couple of Iron Wolves who retreat from the public halls into sections that are like you see them pass some money to a member of the like the uh, the ship's crew, and he just like looks around. And just like waves them through into a, like a uh, private section of the hallway. Hmm. I will try to stealth in with my new Cameolian cloak to drop eaves on them. Okay. Go ahead and roll them bones for steel. Okay, that's nice. really good. And I'm uh, not using my stummer, so they're not going to hear a freaky absence of noise. That's eight degrees of success. I roll a two for the guard, the ship guard. Fuck. Uh, but. The Can fact of the matter is, I would he he would not be able to see that like well enough. Uh, he, I guess it is still eight degrees. It's eight degrees of success versus what would be for him probably like f seven. So I would say you just beat him. Well, <sighs> maybe not seven, but definitely like it was close. Count for a specific number of degrees, or uh, it's basically. So I'm just kind of like eyeballing it for like he doesn't have a specific character sheet. I'm just giving him like. Uh, base human a set stats. perception basically, plus awareness. Yeah, and basically, he would have to be his degrees of success would have to offset and beat Matt's. Game. Yeah, so he came close, but not close enough. Almost got him. I threw a rock at him. If this was an Iron Wolf dude, he definitely would have seen Matt. He would have seen Watchmaker. But this is just a well, security on the ship, which is you know pretty good, but not that good. So, yeah, you're able to stealth in and just follow along. So it's uh, it's three members of the Iron Wolves. And they're walking down, like, hallways. And where the hallways have been packed, or at least had several dozen groups of people throughout, uh, these hallways are pretty empty. Um, you do see members of the uh, ship's crew every once in a while. Um, but you do follow them into a um into like a little room that's been uh, set off for them and they go in and you can see they have hammocks set up and they have armor piled into various like set aside into like sections and weapons set aside it looks like they've set up a small barracks okay it's good to know. I'll make a note of the location, and I'll take a look at what equipment they have there. Okay. So you see that they have their Iron Wolf's armor, um, and they look to have various las guns. Um, and go ahead and make an awareness roll, just if you if you can identify the pattern. Okay. Okay. Ooh. So the armor itself looks to be a little bit better than what you've been used to. Um it looks to be outfitted with some additional armor plating. Uh, some of it actually looks to be carapace as opposed mm -hmm. to flak. 
Uh, and as for the last guns, at least one of them, uh, one of them you can see is a hot shot. Ah, so they do have better gear. Than last time, yep. Makes sense. Uh, looks to be these are... And you would have known from your debriefings and information you received that the Iron Wolves themselves had been suffering rather aggressively from um, the arrests and just killings that the Inquisition have been doing. Um, Makes sense. Using the Arbides as, like, cutouts or the like. So, yeah, you, you're, you're definitely, like... This is what this is the core survivors. Gotcha. So these are the the best dregs. Yep. Cool. All right. Um. So yeah, you are stealthed just outside the door. Uh, yeah. So they go in. Uh, the three guys go in. Uh, you're able to see inside, see all this, uh, and at which point they just close the door. Okay, I will uh, try to drop Eves if I can. Otherwise, I'll scoop. All right, go ahead. Uh, make an awareness again just to see if you're able to hear through the door. Uh, all right, good. So you're able to pick out a few things. Um, you could hear them, like, chatting. as like, looks clear. Don't see anything out ordinary. Get ready. Four days time. All right, we have a time frame. Picking up additional guests. Pylons. There. <laughs> well, they're at their unit cap. <laughs> so that's what it, it... You have to strain a bit to hear through the door, but you do manage to pick up that that's more or less what you're able to hear like and uh, identify from the conversations through the different people all righty what would you like to do now um i will exfil back out to share with the rest of the class okay uh so you just follow your way back i'm not gonna make you roll for it because it's it's been a lot of rolls, yeah. And no one's really looking for you. Um, so you're able to sneak back out um, and bypass the guards, um, you know, wait for the door to open up back up and then slip through before it closes again to actually get back into the public hallways and are able to uh, get back to your uh, cabin. Yeah, what you don't know about uh, Watchmaker is that if you see him eating something and you say what's in his mouth, he'll start chewing fast. <laughs> <laughs> So as Watchmaker approaches Chewie, bark! Hi, Chewie. Good Chewie. Hugs. I will give him a pet. He just wags. Okay, so here's what we got, and then I'll give him the rundown of, uh, looks like we're up against the, uh, the hardened remaining core of the, uh, Grey Wolves, Iron Wolves, and, uh, we've got about four days until the, uh, business goes down from the sounds of it. Gahar is going to um, finish up his preaching session with a section on uh, um, how easy it is to fall into heresy and uh, talk about some of the more common ways that uh, that happens to people and kind of mention uh, as the last thing just kind of offhand, but it's the last thing he mentions, um, Xenotech and uh, anything, you know, that comes from, from Xenos is, is bad. And he kind of ends on that note and then announces that he'll be hearing confessions. All right. And then he kind of like sits back in his little corner booth that he set up and uh, waits. All right. Um, so yeah, Gar has... Uh, like a little booth um, that people can go into. Uh, so you have various people going in, giving confession. Uh, one guy goes in. Uh, he he stole uh, some he stole some bread from another uh, pilgrim. Lay him alive. No, uh, he shall wear sackcloth for two weeks. Nice. <laughs> like, I 
Another guy comes in, just mentions like he had, um, he hadn't been to the, yeah, he hadn't gone to see like a preacher in a few months. Um, so he hasn't been to basically, I don't know what they call it, space church. Let's just say. Confession. Space fashion. Just space church, church in general has been busy. Gar hands him an infinite space rosary and tells him he must pray upon it. <laughs> um, Gar is going through various confessions. People are going in. Um, the little booth Gar has set up, you know, doesn't let Gar see people. Um, eventually, if somebody comes in, um, like, so you're uh, talking about Xenotech. Xenotech is rank heresy. Yeah, that's what they say, don't they? They do. <laughs> what do you know about it? I know it is vile heresy. It must be destroyed. Yeah, but beyond that... I know vile heretics tend to deal in it, and they must be destroyed. Yeah, I would actually keep that to yourself. Just friendly warning. Excuse me? Just, you know, mentioning things like that, especially in the wrong crowd, can get you in a lot of trouble. I would just keep that to yourself uh, if I were you. you. Might find yourself on the... the path of the God Emperor, as must all. Oh, no, no, I agree. But just mentioning things like that can get you on the wrong side of an airlock, if you understand what I'm saying. Hmm. I understand what you're saying and dislike it. Yeah, just, I don't care if you like it. Just keep it to yourself. And he leaves. I'd rolled if somebody just overheard you mentioning that and got a one. Nice. Okay. Um, I will kind of memorize his face. Oh, no, you can't see him. Like, you uh, oh, literally put your... I've set up a booth. I've set up a confession booth. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'm, I'm just imagining, like, Lucy's therapy thing from Peanuts. Is is he able to see like you know like when he leaves like the, like an approximate yeah, like size of like what he is? Uh yeah, you could you'd see like the silhouette, and yeah, you yeah. would you would have heard his voice, which hasn't been muffled in any way. Okay. Um, so you can get that he's approximately like maybe two meters tall, so he's a taller dude. Um, um, so he's a little bit bigger. Did he sound like he was equipped with, like, weaponry or anything like that? Armor? Yeah, you couldn't tell. He usually doesn't come through in the voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just saying when he, like... Like when he walks. Got out, like, when he walks. Did it he... clank? Yeah, so, yeah, stuff like that. Make an awareness roll. I will. <laughs> For all the good it'll take. <laughs> You're just not able to tell. You, you no, can see he's say, got a big... Know. He's got a big silhouette. He's got a, you know, tall dude, from what you can tell. Uh... And he's got, you know, a somewhat deeper voice. I'll remember his voice okay. if I can. It's something. Uh, so he leaves. Other people come in, give confession. Guy cheated on his wife. Uh, guy um, thought his friend was a heretic but decided not to report him. A guy, like a woman, came in and she had like impure thoughts about the god emperor <laughs> bizarre penances for all <laughs> dude same bizarre penances yeah and guard just deals out bizarre penances he's actually got a little book of them <laughs> just comes up with them in his downtown number 47 you gotta roll around and like you gotta step on a bunch of legos Ah, the firewalk. You gotta roll around and, like, tax. That's a good one. But eventually, people stop coming in for confession. They've, uh... There's a lot, but there's also a lot of people giving confession. Okay, well... I gather information through application of guilt, uh... Didn't go so well, did he, Israel? So. I mean, you know there's... Uh, Until next time. 
Well, we got useful information. Just somebody that's really mad at you right now. It was a friendly warning between there's friends. Somebody that's really, there's somebody that's really mad at you right now. It can confirm they're around, but we do. I'll yeah, uh, I'll fill him in uh, on uh, the rest of the shiz. Yeah, they have no. I feel like we need him. like a like a safety word, like in case Gar starts getting accosted, so we could find him quickly. <laughs> you will bathe in the blood and in the in the conifers. No, it'll be it'll be links. our favorite ice cream treat from the rogue traders vessel, um, hexical instead of hellsife. Hexical. <laughs> hexical. Hexico's a safe word. <laughs> I will shout Hexico over the microbead if an angry mob forms. <laughs> this is Hexico. Perhaps I will rally other itinerant creatures into a fighting force. That would be fucking awesome, actually. <laughs> <laughs> there, the, well, there's plenty of creatures around among the pilgrims. Yeah, maybe the next thing Gar will do is kind of go and... Uh, contact with other creatures amongst the pilgrims. But well, that can happen whenever. Okay. But right now Gar has just finished giving confession um, and Watchmaker has finished filling in the rest of the team about what he's witnessed. Okay. So four days time. Four days time. Four days time. Four days time. So you do hear uh, over the intercom system every once in a while about new ships coming in. Um, approximately like 30 more ships come in over the course of the rest of the day, dropping people off. What is the course of the ship anyway? Like where? when is it getting to its destination? Uh, you're not really sure. You'd have okay. to find out. But you, So you've been there approximately like 12 hours at this point. Um, unless you want to do anything else between then. Um, is there anything that we can get out of snooping some more? Not right now. You could try. Well, let's, let's see. Um, we've got our cover identities. We have our births. We've got uh, a couple plot points in the stew. Um, how much discipline? I, I'm guessing a good amount of discipline. Like, I could see, like... Probably not the details of their patrol patterns, but I could see that they had made plans for, like, their level of their level of with itness in terms of actually guarding this. Probably is fairly high. Do you mean the Iron Wolves? Yeah. Um, yeah. If you were to investigate, um, well, actually, go ahead and if you want to investigate, go make an awareness roll. Okay. And I'm, I'm assuming this is kind of retroactively like studying what was in the guard room, the guard barracks. Oh, I would say this would be more for you. Like every time, like a ship is over the intercom called in, uh, Iron Wolves go out and just uh, take a look scout. throughout the crowd and do scout around. Yep. All right. So they're they're actively searching. That's good to know. Well, you can see that they like every time they come out of the hall. Like every time a ship's announced. It's that comes in and drops that off, they they do scan throughout the crew or the people who, like, board the ship. Okay, so they're they're taking eyes an, an eye at people who are coming in, so we have to assume they know our faces and we have to see. Um, or hopefully they just won't make the connection that it's us. Like, they don't have that kind of records, but it's something to be aware of in case we suddenly get made partway through. All right. So, yeah, it's about... In a certain area kind of cleared of people um the navy personnel are preventing people from going into uh sections of the ship Would but they be in on an auction that might be happening hmm. i guess that's up to you to find out how could we find that out uh, i could Do some sneaky shit you you would have to investigate to find out yeah i'm just like thinking like where would we go to know if where could we snoop I don't know where they would have some information like that. But. Um, you can just try to go and look and see where you can break away from the crowd and look around in, like, the gantries. Just yes. kind of go on a fact-finding, troublemaking tour. I mean, I am good at finding trouble. Yeah, let's I, Yeah, let's go do that, I guess. Okay, so 
Tigo wants to just go Exploring. into one of the uh, like private sections, like sections set only for members like of the ship. The crew, yeah, yeah. The captain, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, well, go ahead and start by making a stealth roll to see if you can actually sneak into it without being noticed. What's it? Nice. Okay, you rolled for you rolled well. I'm gonna roll just for the, see if you get caught. Just to see what there's... it feels like. Nah, not even close. All right, Gar's able to, or Tigo's able to sneak in um, into the crew quarters, like the uh, sections of the ship meant only for crew. Um, so go ahead and just make like an awareness roll to see if you can like search throughout and find information that might be able to assist you. All right. Nice. Nice. So, Tigo searching throughout the crew um, is able to overhear a few snippets of information from the crew. Is like, all right, make sure this section's clear for four days' time. And make sure we'll get you a list later of who is allowed in. Yeah, we're going to have to get ourselves on that list. Make sure. Make sure to listen to the Iron Wolves. They're in charge of guarding. But they they mention a section of the ship that they give you the, like the name of it, but you can't identify where that section is. You only have the name of it. It's good to know. It's basically they call it like Room Seventeen. Room Seventeen. Like one of those nightclubs that's meant for like underage people. <laughs> Maybe. Do the, are the rooms labeled at all? Um, no. There's nothing like labeled above each room. There are like, there there's like, sections of the ship. There's like arrows that are labeled, but they say things like galley, uh, or the um, things like the, you know, sections like yeah, galley. I don't know other sections of an imperial like uh, heavy transport ship to be honest, but they I'll they show you like Sorry. large kind of generic sections of the ship where people might be. So like cargo bay one, two, three, things like Laundry that. Section. Yeah, but there's nothing you can see that said like room seventeen, and a lot of the rooms are just not labeled. Uh, would there be a blueprint of the ship that would show us what room seventeen is? You could you have to search and find it. I'm assuming this might be in like the captain's area, but um, how long do so I eavesdrop on the whole thing? They they're gone now. Yeah. So you listened in to their conversation, and it's just one member of the crew talking to another member of the crew. Was I able to? Like, the list is a guy who should be followed. Yeah, like can I I can see who they are, right? Uh, they're in, like, the Navy uniform, or, well, uh, the uniform of the ship. This isn't technically a vessel of the Imperial Navy, and they're not members of the Imperial Navy, right. but they do have uniforms on. Um, you do see his face. Um, so you know what he looks like. He's a, um, older guy, uh, red hair that's going, uh, gray, and he's got a bit of, like, stubble. Uh, and a scar running down his uh, his cheek here. He might have had his face cut in half open in the freaking Eldar raid. It's not a huge scar. No, I'm being I'm being, I'm being petty. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, so I guess I'll like trail him. Okay. I, can I take a look before I start trailing and see if there's anything that in that room where they were talking that might give me. Like, oh, they were just in the halls. Oh, in the hall? All right, so I'll just trail him. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make another stealth roll, just to make sure you can trail him successfully. Yep. Yep. So Tigo's just able to, like, uh, like, he's a ghost. He basically just follows behind the dude, and nobody knows he's there. Uh, and the guy does end up just going, well, to the galley. He just goes... And and starts getting some lunch. Actually, it'd be dinner at this point. But uh, with this stealth roll, can I go check uh, the captain's thing for like a map of the? 
Uh, what would you like to check? Like the bridge or the captain's quarters? Uh, where would a where would he keep a document with uh, like everything on the ship, like rooms, a blueprint, something like that? Uh, Tigo doesn't know. I have an idea. Um, admittedly, a risky one. I mean, um, I guess are there any? Do. You know those sections that the crew doesn't go into anymore. Mm-hmm. Are there any nearby that we could go into stealthily, clear out, and set up like a transponder to like spread everything we're, that's going on to the Inquisition as we're doing it? Oh yeah, so you would actually have been able to be like spot section of the ship. These are easy to identify because they are large bulkheads that are shut and locked, and there are warnings: do not open. Hmm. This sign can't stop me because I can't read. Uh. I'm assuming we're just macro beating this kind of... Oh, yeah. No, you'd probably be... Like, if you were to go t- farther away towards the bridge, uh, that would be outside the kilometer range. But right now, you are still within a single kilometer of each other. Do you want me to go to the bridge and take a look, or...? Um... Otherwise, I can try to get into one of the bulkheads. I would say if we want to do the, the bulkhead clear, we should do that together to quickly... Secure it and then find some place out of the way to set up like a field station. Um, do the bridge first, I would say. All right. So can I keep with this row? I can just go to the bridge. Yeah. So Dino's making his way to the bridge. Uh, takes him a few minutes, and at this point, he gets outside of microbead range. Um, as he, he he really has to like walk like a few extra kilometers. Uh, but while he's walking and takes a or well sneaking because he's got to go a lot slower. Um. You hear the ship shudder, at which point a general alert goes throughout the ship. Warning, beginning to enter into warp travel, and the giant, like, metal shutters start coming down to cover, like, the glass so you can actually see outside the ship. Um, And you catch a bare glimpse as this giant purple hole in real space opens up. Uh, The shutters finish closing and the ship just like you feel it lurch as it enters into the warp uh you feel a slight tingle as the gellerfield comes online and just and after that an unnatural stillness oh boy as the ship's not technically moving it's more just kind of like taking a very nice little shortcut through the warp just kind of getting squeezed through. Hmm. All right. And the uh, alert comes back on. We'll be exiting warp travel within the next eight days. Time is fluid here. The God Emperor protects. Sure does. This doesn't restrict me from going on the bridge, I assume. No. It's just Tigo notices this. Um, yeah, because Sutton is a couple weeks away. Uh, Selena told you he was about three weeks away. Three? And that warp travel is inherently unpredictable. Yep. Correct. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, Tigo's able to make his way to the bridge. Uh, getting to the bridge, it's labeled. There's like signs that say bridge and there's arrows pointing to it um getting there you actually do find a bulkhead that's been closed and there are two navy uh personnel uh crew that are guarding the entrance to the ship they have uh hot shot las guns i could totally take them out probably (laughs) yeah but that's probably not a good idea either but uh the bulkhead like the bulkhead to the bridge is shot uh, you could hear a little bit of like commotion coming there, but just general shouting. You're not sure what it's about. Man, and this is all out of our yeah. yeah. Yep. As far as you're aware, Tigo is chilling with the captain, just knocking back brewskis. How big is this uh, this hallway? Uh, hallway would be 
going to the bridge, it would need a lot more people to go there. So it's approximately like four meters across. And there is no way that I can just like walk up to this. They would, they're they're going to see me. Uh, well, right now you are stealthed and you have a really good stealth roll. Um, so you are able to, you know, approach them and get right next to them if you wanted to. And you're pretty sure you'd be able to. Um, it's just that there's a shut locked door. Yeah, that's that that's not getting open for being noticed. Uh, so yeah, if I can get close to this, see if I can hear what the shouting's about, what's going on. All right. Uh, so you approach the door, and you have guard. Well, I'm not gonna, and I'm not even gonna bother. There's no way they could ever see you with that roll. You approach the door quietly. Um, you turn off your stummer field though, to actually hear stuff. And you press your ear against the bulkhead. Make an awareness roll at a negative 20 to see if you can hear what's going on. This is a thick door. Can I scanner this, or would that just... No, you could scanner. You could scanner. So um, breaks even. I think you could. It's... Well, it's I mean, I pass regardless. Yeah, I'm just kind of curious as to what the scanner's, like, range is in terms of, like, how much it can cut through a door. That's great. It's fine. Yeah, you rolled really well on that, so I'm not even going to bother checking. Um, so you hear the captain, he's just barking orders. He is like, Alright. Maintain course to the warp navigator. What are you able to identify? He's like, warp travel. Successful, Captain. We will be preaching our destination if the God Emperor is with us within eight days' time. I will be I will be aware of the light of the God Emperor to ensure we are properly oriented. Alright. Have guards sent throughout the ship. Make sure everyone is secure. Do not have anyone freaking out over warp travel. For some people this will be the very first. Make sure the gather steel remains strong. I will not have this ship lost to the warp. Narrator, but it would be lost to the warp. <laughs> and plot twist: Ariana is on the ship. <laughs> oh shit! Uh... <laughs> hey guys, the world perils. What if the entire thing just collapses <laughs> into the void? <laughs> Everybody, pull your fate points together. We Everyone, tuck this. your pants into your socks. The Gela field's going off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so much to get back at this point. All right, so Tico sneaks his way back, uh, gets back to the room. Uh, the room you were in would have had a um, would have been able to see out into space, but there is now a thick. The yay big metal shutter um, that is like covering your uh, window. We are warp proofing the ship. It is definitely the preferred configuration of a ship in the warp. You wouldn't really want to wa look out into the warp when you're like, yeah, it's not recommended. That's how you get pink eye. <laughs> like the jaunt? <laughs> yeah, no. The, the jaunt is like you are just your brains by itself for a billion years. The warp is like that, plus there's demons who are like, yo, let me in. I got candy. <laughs> I'm not going to possess you. Who would possess you? That's a stupid thing to do. You're stupid for even thinking of that. It's like space, but the space also has a mouth that is talking to you and is purple. Sounds like acid. <laughs> it wouldn't be a very nice trip, no. That sound kind of like acid. <laughs> let me let me put it this way. There was a, a whole pitch that uh, back in the ancient days, 4chan's uh, tabletop forum did about a horror survival horror game where you're a random guardsman who is in transit in the warp and the Gellerfield blinks for a second and everything goes to hell. If you've ever seen Event Horizon, that would basically yes. be like a ship that traveled through the warp without a Gellerfield. And then oh entered back into real space. Oh, that movie's terrifying. 
Yeah. And everything they we won't need bucks to poop. I've never watched it again. It was terrifying. Yeah. So, yeah, Event Horizon gives a really good idea of what warp travel is like without a Geller field and... Why nobody does it. <laughs> why nobody does it. And really, like, what they experienced in it is pretty bad. And then just the fact that what it brought back after entering in real space is about what you'd expect from, like, 40k. Like, did we do a warp travel? Well, warp travel is just the only version of, like, FTL they have. Yeah, it's, it's the only way we can actually get around the galaxy. Otherwise, it would take us hundreds of years to get to the next whatever. No, it'd take, like, thousands. Well, depending where you are, yeah. But it would definitely, like, this is... And then sometimes warp travel is just like, oops, I was going to do like a three week trip and I was stuck. Um, and it was three weeks for you and 800 years passed in real space. Sorry, Admiral Spire. Or you can show up like two weeks early to a, a warp event that you entered. Yep. Sorry, Admiral Spire. Okay, so we all know uh, the area we're looking for now, though. Or, well, you know the room places. number. Yeah, the room number. 17. 17. Not 42. Not yet. Not yet, Snake. Ugh, excuse me. No. Okay. All right. So, why don't I go talk to other preachers and see if anyone's confessed uh, anything interesting? To uh, do you want to go talk to other preachers? Okay. Uh, just go ahead and make. What would it be? Yeah, do like inquiry to see That'd if you can like find anything out interesting from the other preachers. You can find anybody shit. Oh. Uh, there's a lot of preachers who talk to you, Wait, and they yeah. Know. They just don't have much to say. They talk to you. They actually compliment your sermon. They just nothing really interesting to say. Oh no. Nah. Eh. There's still nothing interesting. Y'all are boring. The God Emperor will smite you for your boringness. Yes. All right. Oh. Well. This is why I can't be a preacher. <laughs> well, I mean, we try our best. What'd you say your name was? Uh. Oh wait, I, I do have a name. I'm the Bat Show. Well, Hubert, we're, try we're trying our best. I mean, you seem like you have a lot of experience in the preaching field. I mean, well, I don't know what you want us to tell you. Take confessions. When you find a heretic, let old Hubert know. Make a charm roll to see if you can, like, convince them. Yes. Awesome. Well... We do do confession. We'll be on the lookout for anyone suspicious. I mean, why do you even why are you interested in finding any heretics, though? I mean, as far as I'm aware, we shouldn't have any heretics aboard. I sense it in you. my bones. They're around. They're well, here. We could my definitely... bones are very smart. They know a lot about these things. I listen to them. Would you give me your bones? Oh, God. <laughs> hey, Chewie's got to eat. Um... <laughs> Well, you you definitely are have tapped into the glory of the God Emperor. Um, so yeah, sure, we'll tell you if we find anybody suspicious. Definitely feel it in my remaining bones, not in my right arm or left leg. Do <laughs> <laughs> you especially feel it where they attach? Is an arm and a leg joke insensitive? No. What will it cost us, Scar? Just an arm and a leg. What did it cost? Everything. About 350. I need about 350. <laughs> so, yeah, Gar talks to a few people, uh, a few of the preachers who he convinces to just let him know if anyone suspicious comes in. <laughs> Nark, <laughs> Nark for the God Emperor. I'm good for now. Alright. Let's see. So, at this point, it's been about a day uh, you've been on board. Um, approaching, you know, like, it, it's 
So the warp travel occurred after approximately like 16 hours um, after you boarded. Um, and it's been a couple hours later. So it's been, yeah, about 24 hours since you've been on board. Um, and Let's sleep and see if anything happens. Okay. So yeah, you... Does Gar, like, just sleep in his little tent near his diorama? In this, like, cargo hold? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. And uh, the rest of you just, like... Gar but... throws himself into the park. He's the eyes out there that they don't know we have. Uh, well... The... Assuming it's this awareness pass, the awareness road pass. Yeah, the, um... The... Room... That Watchmaker Eve and Tigo in. Well, it's quiet, um, mostly. But Gar is like in this uh, cargo hold where there's tons of people and not a lot of people are sleeping. In fact, a few people are passing around. Uh, well, it's, it's just moonshine. They're like passing around some like bottles of whiskey and alcohol they brought. Uh, and one of the preachers does. Like, let Gar, he, like, offers Gar a bottle. I'll drink with him. Yes. This came from our... Well, this came from our monastery. Uh, it's a thousand-year-old recipe. Uh, and we've been brewing this for a couple centuries now. Um, it's been... It's been... We've had this... We just tapped the barrel, uh, and it's been... It's a it's a it's a hundred year old uh it's a hundred year old whiskey. Damn. Super into that. And Gar drinks it and it's terrible. <laughs> like nobody has like corrected them about how bad this recipe is. It's so old that everyone does exactly what Gar is about to do and says, That's amazing! Very smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the fucking lie though? And it's just, but there's this film on it. Uh. <laughs> and it's like, not, it's like there's a flavor that covers up the alcohol, but it's too bitter. And it's just like. Who <laughs> would drink this on purpose? Yeah. Oh, you what like it? God could allow you. Do you like it? We can get you some more. We can get you some more if you like it. Oh, I wouldn't want to, uh, you know, deny, impinge upon your stocks. Thank you, though. He takes a drink himself. Ah, I can really taste the God Emperor in this. He's, we we worship the God Emperor through our brewing process. Yes, I can tell. <laughs> Burn as heretics. A few other people who are like offered this drink, they drink it, and they hear this and just narrow their eyes at the dude. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's trying to poison everybody. And this is the it. real shit right here. Uh, there's people just they have a stew, soups, um, the little makeshift fire. Somebody like found a like it's a large rat looking thing, and they've just like skewered it and are like roasting it over the fire. Actually, a native inhabitant of the ship. <laughs> yeah. At this point, it's just something that came aboard and probably has lived on board the ship the entirety of its life. And dies on the ship. And died on the ship. Part of the crew, part of the ship. Um, and so some, some food getting passed out. Uh, especially because a lot of people aren't actually allowed in the galley, the galley to actually eat. So they just have to, like, use some of their own food. Of that before they became peasants. Uh. Peasants. Well, Kurt, actually, I guess Gar's current ID is not a peasant, but somewhat, well, I guess Gar's kind of just, his ID is just some dude who's slumming it. Yeah. He's a priest. Go with what you know. He he's on a mission trip. The man of the people. Yes, he's the people's champion. Yeah, the Gar, man. Gar just has, like, on his profile, he's just, like, backpacking through Europe from the school of hard knocks. <laughs> but really, his parents are, like, hella rich. Through the warp to meet you, my flock. 
He's an influencer. He's a 40k influencer. <laughs> now we're playing a fucking Black Crusade game. <laughs> oh, if we did do a for, if we did do a Black Crusade game, I would definitely probably put it. I I would definitely put in some sort of like chaos Belle Delphine, just because oh it'd be funny. You're the big duck. <laughs> just because it would amuse me to do that. That's fair. Uh, but yeah, so this like goes throughout the night, um, at which point it would be probably, it'd, it'd be like 9 a.m. Earth time. Uh, so yeah, 8 a.m. Holy Terror time. Um, and whatever time the ship would like have for their various like schedules. Uh, it's a new day. The preachers are out in full force just doing sermons. Um, Gar is still recovering from the bad wine. Gar is, like, had this wine. He didn't have enough to, like, even really get buzzed on it. And it really doesn't give you a buzz unless you have a lot of it. But it definitely f sits in your stomach. In fact... Make a toughness roll, just oh, just for the roll, no. just for the hell of it. Roll for acid reflux. Roll for tums. Oh. Reminds yeah. me of this one time I ate way too much movie popcorn with the fake butter, and oh, it God. just sat there until I threw it up. Oh. Well, it's sort of like that. It's definitely sitting in your stomach, and your stomach is really rumbling, and not in a nice way. Not like, ooh, I had a good meal, and I have to digest this. This is like. Your stomach is like, poison me. You poisoned me. I don't know what to do with this, so I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I turned into fucking Mr. Hibbert. <laughs> Dr. Hibbert, he didn't go to medical school for. No, he didn't go to medical school. <laughs> medical school. That's Dr. Nick. If you turn into Dr. Nick, I'll give you some extra XP. Oh god, that would be a fun <laughs> 40k character, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, the church in Dr. Nick. Hi, everybody. Hey, Hi, Dottore Dr. Nick. Majors, Dottore Majors Biologicus Nick. Now that's scary. Uh, yeah, just bunch of, um, bunch of people out and about. Um, but yeah, Car, you're like sitting as still as you can. Uh, and one of the preachers from last night who you talked to came up. He's like, you mentioned if I heard anything in a confession to let you know that it was off or heretical. And yeah, somebody, men good, somebody mentioned that they were engaging in something that they felt guilty about and wanted to confess ahead of time. Um, but they didn't really give me any details. Uh, they just said it was on board in a few days' time, and they didn't feel comfortable with it. So I told them to just, you know, give some prayers to the God Emperor to absolve his sins, and the God Emperor should forgive him. I mean, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, the the soothing words of a master theologian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> um, I mean, a little bit skeptical. It's also gonna, his... It doesn't sound like there was any bizarre penances involved, um, and so he's not sure how that's going to work, forgiveness-wise. Oh no! See, on our planet, like we assume the God Emperor wants to forgive you as long as you actually do want forgiveness. So. Oh, we've got like. Guard narrows his eyes. We've got like top forty Christianity going on here. <laughs> we we don't do that here. But um, I didn't see what he looked like, but he said that. I mean, from what I could tell, he looked to be some mercenary type. Hmm. And. I was, I was rolling to see how much information to give Gar, and it, roll, it wasn't a great roll. Hmm. Okay. You've done well, Brother Maynard. Which is your name now? 
uh, thank you, brother. <laughs> you actually did say the name, didn't you? Uh, Hubert. Sure. Inspector Closeau. Hubert Punot. Is, well, I mean, I'll be on the lookout if there's anything else I can do for you. Uh, anybody else? Yeah, certainly keep your eyes open if you uh, hear anything else. And uh, as, uh, you know, servants of the God Emperor, we do uh, allow privacy in our confessions, but uh, if you do happen to hear a familiar voice uh, whilst you are uh, out and about and are able to uh, identify this individual, I would certainly be interested in hearing that. I just remember, he did say one thing that was weird. He had to go pay the toll. Hmm. Interesting. But I don't know what toll he means. As far as I'm aware, uh, you have to pay ahead of time to get on board the ship. Get the troll toll to get the little boy's soul. <laughs> Do I want? Likely. But that's all. Confusion. Confusion. And delay. But. I will be, I will keep on, I will keep my ears open, um, and I will try and identify him if I'm able to, uh, although I guess that's not quite something I'm supposed to do, but it definitely was it, odd, it very, I don't know, seems suspicious is all, I suppose, but maybe I'm just reading too much into this. <laughs> I'm, I'm certainly not the most inquisitive type, I'll, I'll admit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that reminds me, speaking of being inquisitive, uh, I will try, since it's been a while, to uh, use the comm leech again. Okay. Uh, at this point, you definitely would have recharged better, so go ahead and make the tech use. I'll fade that. Okay. I'll literally identical. Put my head down and sigh deeply. It just picks up all sorts of stuff. I find an old AOL CD from the dark age of technology. It just like, the comm just like, picks up all sorts of different signals. Um, dot the crew, more crew chatter. Uh, talk about uh, the warp from the bridge, you're pretty sure. Um, you do hear something about it paying the toll. Is that something I can try to tune in on to get more info on? Uh, no. You just hear it. You just hear, pay the toll, and then the battery drains. Okay. So that's something to look out for. Um, I'll ask Kigo when he goes for a wander to, uh, keep his ears open. For some toll paying. Uh. Missed the AOL floppy disks. Because that was how I got floppy disks. <laughs> I think that's how we all got floppy disks. Yeah. Would Chewie yeah, be able like... to recognize voices? No. No, they would all come in like kind of weird for him. But he could follow smells. That's really the only thing he could like specifically identify. Gotcha. Uh, try to go out for my uh, daily inquiry, stealth stealing. All right. So what will what is so Tico's gonna go out and the board to uh, yeah. So go ahead and start with stealth. All right. Um. I yep. mean, if somebody rolled really good, I wouldn't be even surprised right now. You're fine. As um, far as your reptiles are sneaky. I just want to take. Uh, I guess look around the room, see if anything suspicious, any bribes or toll pains happening. All right, so where did you sneak to? Uh, where... Where Gar was doing his Preaching? sermon. Okay. Where I think that's where also where Watchmaker saw the guy pay off to get by. Uh, it was close to there, yeah. Yeah, um, so, so that area. Do you go into like, the big cargo bay where Gar's set up and like all the people are? Um, so, he's, you know, sneaking around, kind of doing, like, the Assassin's Creed thing where he does, like, goes into groups and is able to, like, sneak into, like, various groups of people. Um, 
And so you wanted to kind of listen around for what exactly? Uh, anybody that uh, needs got to pay something or notice anybody exchanging money off se in secret. Okay. Did you want to do this via just observation or by talking to people? Uh, <clears throat> let's try it with observation and then talking to people. All right. Go ahead and make an awareness roll. Mm, you're just not able to really see anything strictly that out of the ordinary. Um, I I have an idea. Yes. I'm going to spend today acting as a money changer because I'm sure these people all need different things, and they probably, if these are you know, uh, people uh, like pilgrims, they probably have valuables that they can bring with them because that's all they have, and then they trade those for stuff. So I'm going to use our Imperial Inquisitorial Discretion Funds to be a money changer, and I'm going to do um, scrutiny rolls on people I'm money changing with um, regarding concepts of money lending and, like, paying the toll. Okay. See if I can look for clues that way. Okay. That's a great idea. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and make an influence at a plus 10, just because, yeah, people got to get a money changer, honestly. Um, well, I passed. Yeah. So you're fine. Um... You set up shop, uh, and you just kind of, you know, let people know that you are authorized to do money uh, lending and money changing. Um, and so you do get a bunch of pilgrims who come in. Uh, they have everything from, like, their own home currency that uh, looks to be various things. Some of it are, like, gems or valuable metal. Uh, some of it are things like stamped, uh, like with the what looks to be some sort of noble or governor. Um, some of it's just very simple, like trade or barter in terms of like these are cans of food, or some of it is just like handcrafted things, like um, carved idols of like various saints or angels, or even something that represents the god emperor. And they all come in, and yeah, you just easily able to use your inquisitorial funds to give them like money. Although, actually, I can explain. Here's gold. You're gonna end up with a lot of trinkets. Me? I am. I, I want you to do. Is there a commerce thing? There's I a trade there commerce. Is a commerce. Uh, skill. There is a commerce skill. I do not have a trained. We have. I don't think we've ever used it. No, we, we haven't. Do a commerce roll. Make. Make a logic the... test. Uh, I don't. I don't think I have logic either, unfortunately. That's fine. I'm just, yeah. Well, I'm and almost... not bad. Not bad. You are not strictly able to identify the value of the various things they bring in. So you give everyone what you're pretty sure is a little bit more than it's actually worth. Yeah, that's fine. So that's you're money. probably giving them like a ten to fifteen percent. Honestly, Markable. that's probably going to make us more popular because yeah, they're going to spread good. word among the others. Hey, there's this money lender who doesn't know the rates around here. <laughs> so everybody go to him quick. <laughs> they, uh, yeah, they. Uh, you give them like just. Guy brings you like, what looks to be a bone carving of an angel, and you give him a sack of a sack of thrones. There you go. It's like. This sack of thrones weighs the same amount as this little carving you gave me. That's Therefore, even. Therefore, it is even. <laughs> and he's like, I'm good at this. Yep, that's right. So, um, go ahead and do some scrutiny rolls on the various people. This could be like, it, this is going to be a um, like an extended. This test. is going to be an extended test. Yeah. So just start with some scrutiny rolls. Give me like four. And we'll see how okay. this goes. And we'll just say you... Okay. So, two degrees. One. Two. Seven. Three. Jesus. Ooh. Okay. You know what? I Honestly, you're, you're looking at that. fucking 14 degrees of success over a four-hour period. Uh, yeah, I'll so... You do see some people... So, it's mostly pilgrims who come in. You're getting, like, a few people every, like, 15 minutes... Um, and as you, like, start to do this more and more, more people come in as the word spreads that you're basically a money lender who doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Um, <laughs> and you actually eventually get some iron wolves who come in. All right. And are, 
Yeah, they're they're exchanging like local currency uh, from whatever planet they previously been stationed at, and are exchanging it for thrones. Um, so they hand you like things that are they you're pretty sure they'd be worthless unless you're on that specific planet. It's like little scraps of paper, like green bits of uh, paper money. I'll I'll look at one of the scripts and I'll say, uh, this looks like this might be a voucher for a local toll bridge. Eh, you know what you gotta say. <laughs> well, that's what they've been saying. Pay the toll. You, you know what? I've said a little too much. Don't worry about it. I'll I'll just take these thrones and go. Um. Okay, but um. Can, I follow, can he like? Is there is there somebody undercutting me out there? Because. I mean, between the two of us, that's got to be pretty hard to do. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the the first hits free thing where the first day my rates are, let's call them favorable, right? And I'll slide him a little extra money as I'm doing that. Make a deception check, but do it at like a plus twenty because you're kind of like being a little. Racing the wheels as we go. Yeah. Ah. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll fade it. Okay. I don't have a good chance of succeeding, but I like what I'm doing, so I'm gonna put your, put your mustache on. Ooh, no. I failed worse. Uh, no, no, no one's undercutting you as far as I can tell. He doesn't really, you know, he kind of, like, side-eyes you. He's like, yeah, don't, don't, don't worry. We all know the first hit's free. <laughs> so, am I in range to, like, see this, that he, you know, he acknowledged the uh, toll thing? Well, you're in the same room, so if, I don't know if you, you probably wouldn't be in sight range. Unless you would like organize that ahead of time, but you would definitely be within micro bead range. Uh, I I will say like throughout the day when I'm waiting for the uh, com leech to spin back up, I'm I'm gonna be doing this. So if they come by, they can drop eaves. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what's Eve doing? For Chewy. Um. So has uh, Watchmaker said anything over the micro bead or no? Yeah, I'll I'll keep them loosely. Uh, Checked in. I'm not gonna like say everything in case other people are doing the same thing we are and listening in. Okay. Um. I might go check out the area where you're working. Okay. Okay. Um. Maybe nice. see the body language of that guy because he's kind of like. A little sus. Like, Can I yeah. scrutiny <laughs> that like interacting from far away? This way he doesn't have to say anything over the because it is a is a wolf. So. Yeah. So. Do it at negative ten just because you are a fit farther. And you're trying to like. Same. Uh, Eve would be closer, so you can just do a straight scrutiny. Okay. Or, that was security. Uh, yeah, whatever. Oops, let me, um... Well, what's my scrutiny? I'll fade mine. Okay. Mine's is... Nope. Well, my... Oh, you hit security, to... not scrutiny. I know. Uh, she did. Yeah, Eve did. All right. I'll See, tell you that's what. bullshit, because my, my security role would have passed that. All right, there you go. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so, Tigo, you're not really able to make any idea about it. Um, as for Eve Ward, the guy looks a little... He's happy to get this money, but he looks a little suspicious as to why Watchmaker is giving him more. Okay. Um, I'll keep eyes on him. When he leaves, uh, I'll just keep leaning into the uh, cutthroat businessman thing. Like, you know, if you happen to know where uh, some of the uh, competition is out there, if you could uh, send them my way, I would appreciate that. What do you? All got our, uh, we all have the things we need to pray to the God Emperor for for this pilgrimage, and uh, I need a little bit of capital in order to uh, make my prayers come true. What are you uh, looking to do exactly with the competition? I mean, I don't see how. I, nothing, nothing too illegal, I promise. I'm, I have my orders from a writ of trade and I have to fulfill them or my father will be sold to a debtor's colony in a system I've never heard of. Oh yeah, no, that's normal. Well, let me tell you what, a couple of my guys and I can, you know, we're mercenaries. You give us a little bit of, uh, you give us a cut and we'll just make sure that uh, the competition just decides that it's not worth it. Hmm. You give us 20%, I gotta split this between, like, eight guys, then we'll make sure you make more than our, like, what you're paying us. And we'll even get you a little security, too. 
Hmm. I think I'd like that. I, uh, 20%, but that's firm. You can't come back to me later and say, oh, another guy wants in on this. Well, we have ourselves a deal. Pleasure working with you. May the God Emperor watch over you. And you as well. At which point he uh, heads back and just goes and talks to a few of the other Iron Wolves around. All right, I'm going to keep an eye on him for now. Okay. So Eve's going to just basically kind of kind of like follow him around. Um, and over the course of a period, so he goes, talks to his friends. At which point you see them go to like different people who are also doing money lending. And from a distance, you see them conversing, not sure what they're saying exactly. But then the money lender just is like, folds up shop and... <laughs> And... Hey, good news, Selena. We got that money lender network you asked us about uh, up and running. <laughs> what? <laughs> just the same shit as the freaking dually school. We're just <laughs> handing out the Inquisition phone. Guys, stop <laughs> building. Stop building infrastructure when you're supposed to be assassinating heretics. <laughs> <laughs> we got the assassination thing down pat, oh, so, so we have a side hobby. <laughs> yeah, this is our side hustle. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking that. Yes. I mean, to be fair, Inquisitorial Bridge Builders is probably a pretty neat story to be told in 40k. I mean... Guys who actually have to set up the infrastructure for uh, assholes like us to do our thing. Yeah, no, I mean, I assume then, it must be a thing. Then the it, assholes, I mean, it literally it must, like, literally must be. Then the assholes have their hand in, in uh, infrastructure building, too. Nobody ever thinks about the contractors who are working on the Death Star, man. Yeah. Hey, they were all military. They deserve to die. <laughs> Were they, though? Yeah. Okay, if you say so. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm convinced. <laughs> Here's the thing I wonder. Like, everybody who's like, why do they have a big exhaust port? Why don't they just cover it up? Because it would have filled the thing with exhaust. You can pull the guard, pretty much. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I, I believe you. I want to see that. I want to see somebody, like, cover up the exhaust port on the Death Star, and then it just kills everyone inside. Everybody inside dies. They just suffocate. <laughs> you never think about that. That It, it was there... And I know they had it in Rogue Trader for that reason, but it's literally like that was the original purpose was just the Emperor, the Empire thought they were invincible and they didn't care that you had this big hole, which honestly wasn't even that big a, uh, a flaw because it required a space wizard to shoot a hole, like a bomb into it. If the space wizard didn't exist, it would have been perfectly invincible. Sure. That's right. Uh, so yeah, you have yourself some iron wolves who are just so assisting in the hustle you are paying the protection money so about two hours later um and watchmaker you notice your business really picks up <laughs> and after so after your business does pick up after a few more hours you find this you have a big sack of cans of food little like bits of art other swords of trade, some of it are, like, old guns that people swear are holy artifacts used by, like, some saint from, that you've never heard of. Can I try a trade armor check to uh, inspect the quality of these weapons? Yes, you can. Uh, <laughs> I have one more fade point. I'll I'll use it just because I think we're near the end anyway. Okay. God! This is oh, a Lord. giant sack filled with soak sculptures. <laughs> this is a holy gun that was used by a... Uh, a saint to kill a demon. It's just rusty because they didn't want to, like, ruin it. That makes sense. Uh, and you also have loads of local currency. If you, you kind of feel like if you were to go down to, like, you have, like, a currency from, like, four dozen different planets, and if you were to go to them, you could probably, like, spend it and on, you know, a lot of nice things. But here it's worthless. Uh, and eventually the Iron Wolf guy comes back he's like all right you are as at least here the only uh money lender we were able to convince your competition that it was wiser to go somewhere else so uh, uh we'll be I'm taking happy. so for that uh 20 percent cut ah right you are as... give him the sack of soap sculptures <laughs> <laughs> Now, hold on. Let's let's do this amicably, like. Very holy. What, what 
where are you guys getting off this uh, pilgrimage? Because I guarantee you I have the currency that'll get you to your next deployment just fine. Somewhere in just kind of like like in a room of dominoes, you're just kind of walled into the corner. That's Watchmaker right now. It's just it's all random knickknacks and prayer effigies and shit. Uh, make a charm at like a plus 10. With tears in my eyes, game, I beg you. <laughs> it's like, hmm, you can't help but notice you spent your second fate point. <laughs> yeah, we're getting up the same place uh, everyone else is. I wouldn't worry about it. So anyway, about those thrones. 20%. Yeah. The deal did not specify the form of currency. It definitely didn't, but uh, he'll, uh, he'll sigh and dole it out. Thank you. All right, well, we'll be back tomorrow. Sure, yes, business looks you. like it's, uh, he just looks at your, like, little collection of crap. He's like, looks like it's going great. <laughs> uh, Watchmaker will console himself knowing that it's going to really piss off Selena Escher because he has a justification for spending this much money. This, honestly, the amount you're spending is, like, a drop in a vast ocean of the amount of wealth that the Inquisition would have <laughs> access to. Yeah. So then he's going to be like, you should have spent more just to, like, grease the wheels a bit. But in... This came out of Sutton's half. <laughs> that would be amusing. It's like, honestly, I kind of just forget the end of it. It's like, Selena's so just going to, like, mail all this shit to, like, Sutton, but, like, each thing in his own box. It's like, I have so much goddamn cardboard! Our condolences... Uh, but yeah, so, the, uh, at this point, though, the comm leech would have recharged his batteries. All right, I'm going to give it another whirl. Okay, go ahead and... See if I can actually succeed. I, 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 I have the doubt. Hey! All right, so, it's going through these different channels, and you actually do remember what this configuration was on the previous channel when you heard pay the toll. Yeah, and I, I was also thinking, like, just my actions probably kind of changed the local chatter to a pattern that I know to ignore. Yeah. It's like, they're all talking about this thing that I know is unrelated, so I can ignore it now. There's this crazy guy giving way too much money out. It's like, you able, able to pay the toll? It's like, Morgana will be happy. It's like, Morgana. you ready for... It doesn't matter. Everything's all set. I'm surprised she's even trying it at this point. All right. Well, it is what it is. Everything ready? Yeah, we got a few more people who still need to, you know, show up, tell us they're ready for the auction, but then we'll be good. Hmm. And the pearl? It's secure. It's locked up somewhere tight. Don't worry. I know she is. Hmm. All right. Well, two and a half days. Yep. Room 17. Yeah, I know. <laughs> At which point the uh, battery drains again. Well, that's more than we had, so it's a start. All right. Uh, it's been about two hours, so I think this is a good spot to call it. Yeah. All right, so two hours, 200 XP, and we will pick this up next week. That was fun.